Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic in mathematics, deriving the general formula for cubic equations. Cubic equations date back to around 2000 BCE when the Babylonians solved specific cases geometrically. By the 9th century, Persian mathematicians like Al-Khwarizmi began exploring these equations. Then during the Renaissance, Italian mathematicians like Scipione del Ferro and Tartaglia cracked the general method for solving them. Their discoveries revolutionized algebra and laid the groundwork for what we know today. Let's explore how this historic breakthrough leads us to solving cubic equations in the modern era. The general form of a cubic equation is a times x cubed plus b times x squared plus c times x plus d equals zero. But how do we solve this? Let's explore how to derive the general formula for the roots of this equation. Before solving, Let's understand the behavior of cubic functions. Graphically, cubic functions typically have a characteristic shape with one or more roots. The curve either crosses the x-axis once or has two points of intersection, depending on the sign of the leading coefficient. As shown in the graph, cubic equations often have three roots. These are the points where the function intersects the x-axis. But how do we find these roots? To solve, we begin with the general cubic equation a times x cubed plus b times x squared plus c times x plus d equals zero. First, we divide through by a to simplify the equation. This gives us x cubed plus b divided by a times x squared plus c divided by a times x plus d divided by a equals zero. Next, to eliminate the x squared term, we substitute, let's set x equal to y minus b divided by 3a. This transforms the equation into a simpler form called a depressed cubic. The new equation becomes y cubed plus p times y plus q equals zero, where p and q are constants derived from the original coefficients. Now let's recall two important relationships we derived earlier. The first is that the cube of m plus the cube of n is equal to negative q. In other words, when you add the cubes of m and n, the result is the negative of q. The second relationship tells us that three times the product of m and n equals negative p. So, when we multiply m and n and then multiply the result by three, it gives us the negative of p. To move forward, we cube the p term to help relate it to the other terms, and then multiply the q term by n cubed. This establishes a relationship between m cubed and n cubed. Next, we substitute that m cubed times n cubed equals negative p cubed divided by 27. With this, we rewrite the second equation, making the next step easier. Now let's rearrange this equation and shift terms to one side, setting everything equal to zero. This step turns the equation into a quadratic form, making it much easier to solve. With the quadratic form in place, we can use the standard quadratic formula to find n. The discriminant plays an important role in this formula. By solving the quadratic equation, we find n. Once we have n, we use it to find em. m and n are related symmetrically, and for each solution of n, there will be two possible values for m, one positive and one negative. Now that we have m and n, we can find y by adding m and n together. Then we shift back to x by substituting x equals y minus b divided by 3a, which gives us the first root, x1. So the first root, x1, is the sum of these cube roots minus b divided by 3a. Now with the primary root found, we need the other two roots. The cube roots of unity, represented by omega, omega, give us the other roots. By multiplying the primary root by omega and omega squared, we get the second and third roots. Thus the second root, x2, is omega times the first root, and the third root, x3, is omega squared times the first root. And that's it. Using clever substitution and algebraic manipulation, we've derived the general formula for solving cubic equations. We found three roots, one real and two complex roots, all related through the cube roots of unity. Thanks for watching. If you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more math content. Until next time, happy calculating.